comic fam we are back at the table and i'm sitting with my homies it's been a minute guys it has been several minutes i know at least quite a few minutes now i saw ryan yesterday because he was at the shop helping bag and board some comics for all of you out in the comic fam but i don't get an opportunity to record with him very often so it is really good to be sitting here and doing this one with you ryan i agree and we're not socially distant at all which is fun <laughs> but you know we're we're all part of the same crew anyway so well we're part of the same social circle exactly. so that's why you know we're being safe here but comic fam we have a fun treat for you today slap the subscribe button hit the like button and enter you to win this wretches number one peach momoko milky comics comic tom exclusive because mm -hmm. we got some peach to discuss it's still the year of the peach it may be october halloween is around the corner it's my favorite month of the mm -hmm. year but we have some goodness to discuss we have an unboxing, some original art. What? Yeah. Russ treated himself. <laughs> but before we do that, we need to let the community know that this artist isn't just a variant cover artist. So for those of you that have been following Peach recently, you'll probably know that in the month of December, she has 18 different mainstream covers coming out and at least 10 more that are specific to other shops. She has been busy. But if you like her art style, you need to check out Heavy Metal Magazine number 288. There's this great... Frank Frazetta Death Dealer cover, but inside, Peach Momoko has her first story. That's right. It's only a few pages, and we also have her second story in the same magazine. Heavy Metal is dope. It's a lot of indie reads. It's multiple comics, but they're very short to debut new artists. And Peach debuted her second story in issue 290. Today, we're going to be talking about Heavy Metal issue 299, which is the third story that peach moko has done in this magazine came out this month comic fam they're all pretty like like tom was saying they're all pretty short they're smaller they're self-contained they're kind of like morality tales that she's doing in here about people making stupid decisions and kind of having the those decisions come back and bite them you know i'm trying to i'm trying to explain it without explaining it so you can check them out <laughs> yourselves because they're pretty creepy and weird and 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 gross you know in a way there's there's a lot of like gross body horror stuff that goes on in here which Tom's all about. It's an incredible uh, Japanese horror style vibe. When I interviewed Peach earlier this year, something she said that she was trying to bring to the publishers, whether she'd be dealing with Venom, whether she'd be dealing with, I don't know, Captain Marvel or somebody like Spider Woman, how to incorporate the Peach vibe. But she would also say her signature horror vibe because peach is a horror artist and mm -hmm. you see that in these pages and oh my goodness talk about the panels it's easy to get the impression if you're more of a casual observer such as myself that peach momoko is just a variant cover artist and the thing about a cover artist is you're seeing one image you don't really get to see how a person can construct a story and you know sequential arts and, and the art of comic book storytelling you get that in here you finally get to see her tell the story which is exciting for me because it, it kind of paints this artist in a whole new way. When you read this for the first time, did you get that taste? Because I am so hungry for more. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is the type of thing that I'm looking at this art, and this is the style that I really, really enjoy. There's the, this darkness, this bleakness. There, there's just absolutely grotesque stuff happening. So this story in issue 299 of Heavy Metal, we follow a tattoo artist. And what do we know about Peach and her love for tattoos? Well, we know that originally Peach was training to be a tattoo artist and decided along the way that she would start doing comic book art. And now that is what she's doing. But we know that her love is rooted in traditional Japanese style tattooing. And that's what this story is about. Yeah, the story is about this tattoo artist who has like a supernatural ability to kind of like erase someone's sins by tattooing them. She can amend the bad spirits of the guilty with her inks that she performs on people's skin. It's a crazy concept. And again, the fact that this is a short few pages, it doesn't take long for you to kind of figure out what happens to this client of hers. You know, you, you, you get you get kind of one person's story as they are being tattooed and you're kind of exploring their sins and what they have done wrong and how you know sometimes you can't really erase everything that someone has done wrong and she does all of this by channeling clearly some of her famous influences i was getting big junji ito vibes oh it, completely and totally i mean it just felt with, with the black work being so stark and just really that horrific style i also felt a lot of um takeshi Mike, like like audition that type of thing because there really is a layer of grotesque here so mm -hmm. i mean 
Peach's storytelling and the art that she's doing here is really moving her to a very, very high echelon. I mean, she's in great company for the horror. You said uh, audition, and I'm thinking about needles. And there's like, a, <laughs> there's like a gross connection between that movie and this comic that I'm now... I'm all shivery now. There's also an incredible bowl of eyeballs that reminds me a whole lot of the Corinthian from Sandman. I mean, there's some really, really great horror influences here. All right. So being that we are clearly fans of Peach Momoko, Russ hits me up out of the blue and says, dude, <laughs> I treated myself. It's on its way. And we're sitting in front of, I believe, maybe the first Peach Momoko original art in Washington State, possibly. Oh, maybe. I, I, I don't have any idea who has these, but not a lot of people are talking about it. But um, I had the opportunity to purchase two original art pieces from her, and uh, I haven't opened them. I received these on Monday. We I've been getting text this. messages. Dude, I can't wait. Are you sure I can't open it? I'm like, Russ dude, if you open it beforehand, everyone's going to know because you won't <laughs> be able to act. So let's uh, experience it together. So I've been waiting 48 hours as I was walking out of the shop yesterday, Russ like stops me and says he just shows me this tube and he's like, I'm so excited to open this, but I gotta wait to do it on camera. And I, I didn't realize I would be seeing it <laughs> open the very next day, but he has been talking about this, even to me. Oh All right, well, let's get this bad boy Ooh, open. Well, first and take off, a look. there is a certificate of authenticity with a seal and a signature. Ooh. Like already, that's just oh, with the title in Japanese. That's so cool. Oh, God. Like it's like an, like an ancient scroll that he has to open <laughs> unfurl the scrolls. It's wrapped. And we're going to make sure that we have some shots for the comic fam. So don't worry about showing them, but let's just sure. take this in. Oh, my goodness. Comic fam, this is crazy. I, I wonder how much of her art is actually the size. This is incredible. So now I have to go oh and get gosh. it framed. Wow. Um, but this is an original painting, uh, Nausicaa of the Wind. And... Uh, Peach actually had this on display at the Studio Ghibli Museum that was uh, in Los Angeles. And then I guess they had another showing in Hawaii. And then pandemic happened and everything kind of settled down. But you can see the amount of detail in here. This is a watercolor and pencil. And the amount of detail is, is stunning. Did you say this was actually on display? This is actually on display. And uh, I do have a photo of the gallery that I'm going to give to you that we'll be able to slap in the video here. Oh, my goodness. So. What an amazing piece, man. I grew up on Studio Ghibli stuff, dude. Oh, yeah. Yes. Just, just some some incredible stuff. Uh, I was actually looking at a Porco Rosso uh, watch. Seiko is doing a special limited Porco Rosso. And then I realized with the exchange rate it was like six thousand oh dollars and i'm gosh. like i'm not buying that watch <laughs> but something a little bit more in my Someday. price range was this the yeah. color work in person comic fam i'm like i'm like stunned i've been this looking is... at these photos for the last couple <sighs> months on her website and when i reached out and said hey do you have this this and this she's like oh i do have the nasca left and i said i want them <laughs> can i put a down payment and get these done so um just incredible i can't stop looking at like this white spattering in the in the right. corners here there are so many little tiny details on this and and you can see there's a lot of incredible techniques that are just layered upon layered with with the you know the, the oil stuff and with with the watercolor stuff and the pencil work and the brush work i mean there's just so much going on here this is definitely layers beyond comic book art pages you know this is truly truly incredible art all right, so this isn't the only thing you got. I didn't realize you got two for us to check out today, so let's uh, take a look at this one. Oh, yes. So I had to get the companion piece. Oh, man. Look at that red, Russ. Yes. That is crazy. This is just just beautiful. Oh, my gosh, the red splotches on the white down here. Mm. Look at her signature right. in that black ink. So oh, my gosh. When you see a normal comic book and it's, you know, 10 and a half inches by eight and a quarter inches or something. And then you look at this and go, no, this is two feet by three feet. This is just every bit of detail, every oh, bit of everything. I am so looking forward to getting these framed and displaying them at the shop and yeah. never selling them ever. These are so personal collection People right now. Are gonna these ask. are mine. These are mine. They're not for sale. Are and these I'm... for sale, sir? Nope. They no. are mine. Okay. Oh my gosh. I am really digging this, dude. It, it, comic fam, it's a it's one thing to see these covers on screen. It's another to have a comic book. Heck, we have our a couple our variants that we've done with Peach, but seeing this in person, mm -hmm. this is next level. This I is I don't even like 
being too close to it. I don't want to like <laughs> touch it. I, don't, I was going to lean forward just now, but that's like, yeah. Uh, Look no, at the I eyes, don't. guys. Ugh. Look at those eyebrows. Yep. Oh my goodness. Every single little detail. It's so it's crazy that she she paints this because like look at the shading and how delicate that green tint is around her like the the like underneath her hair and then look at her cheeks. There it's got another color that's layered there and it's all white in the middle. It just contrasts so well. So, if you like this one, Wait until I get the next one, Skin. Oh, comic fam, subscribe <laughs> to the channel. Slap that like button. It'll enter you to win Peach Momoko goodness this week. I want to know what your favorite variant is. Heck, go over to the Key Collector Artist Search. Type in the word Peach. She's the only one. And there's over 60 covers that are loaded in there that are being followed because they are selling so well. There's a lot of Peach art that is worth collecting. And comic fam, the original art is next level. Again, thank you so much, Peach, for this. This is just better than I could have expected. I am so happy right now. You have no idea. <laughs> uh, I almost ended up just waiting on the couch while you guys went in here and recorded an unboxing video. So I'm glad I got to even be a part of this and experience some art. <laughs> But that's not all comic fam. Peach Momoko is clearly an artist we look up to, one that we really appreciate. And she's a fan of the show. You know, we did an interview with her. She had her interview translated so we can bring her voice to the community. It's, it's a really humbling thing. And you're wearing a shirt here because the community helps support us through kind of a difficult time, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And, and with the shop being closed for 12 weeks because of pandemic, we had multiple stores in the greater Seattle area go out of business. I'm hearing reports of more stores that are going. So between the pandemic shutdown and the break-in, we just had a couple gut punches right after another. And the fact that Peach reached out and wanted to do a collaboration with what? us to help the, the show, help the shop, help the community. I mean, really, this is an amazing blessing for us to even offer this. That's right. You heard it right, comic fam. Peach Momoko has donated two different designs. The first Peach Momoko wear that you're going to be able to get and we're going to be putting out, and the proceeds are going to help the show. So thank you so much, Peach Momoko. And you can get a chance at the first Peach Momoko shirt and tote bag by hitting the link in the description. We'll do a deal for both of them. And it's it's helping the show, and it's, it's such a cool thing. These are going to be super limited. These are going to be offered once. And when this print run is done, they are not happening again. That is part of the agreement, and we are absolutely doing it. So if you want this, get on it, comic fam. And as always, geek responsibly. <laughs>